Welcome to this episode of This Old Dell, where we repurpose an old Dell PC, show you all the cool things you can do with it. Today's Dell is a fresh pick from eBay, just costing $90 shipped. Comes equipped with a 6 core i5 8500 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, and a 256 gigabyte NVMe drive. A fantastic price for such a strong machine. Today we're going to talk about repurposing this Dell and installing Casa OS on it. What is Casa OS? Casa OS is a free and open source application layer for a home server supporting both x86 and ARM platforms. It uses Docker containers to make setting up your home server quick and easy. I consider it a front end for that makes setting up a home server for file sharing and Docker's painless. Currently, the supported operating systems for Casa OS are Debian, Ubuntu, Raspberry Pi OS, Elementary Linux, and ArmBM. Things that we're going to cover in today's video are opening up Casa OS for file sharing locally, adding additional applications to the store, working around a, a quirk for iOS file copying from your phone or tablet to your Casa OS server, and then opening up port 53 so that you can run Adblock on your home network. Let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to SSH right into our old Dell. All right, now we're logged into our old Dell. All right, first things first, what we want to do is we'll go to the Casa OS website. Quick and easy overview on this page will show you just what the Casa OS front end looks like, a little bit of information about the applications that you can run on your machine, and some of the features of this free open source software. Installation, literally the easiest in the world. We copy this one command, and we'll come back over here to our terminal window, we paste it, and we'll run it. Enter in our sudo password, and we wait for it to install. Literally, installation is just that easy. You can see we're all set up, all done. All we did was drop one command into the terminal. Cake. All right, now let's access our new server. All right, our first time setup screen. We'll go through, we'll make this one easy. Enter in a super secret password. just that easy. We're here at the home screen. You can see we've got a couple of basic pieces here. Uh, we've got a little bit of information about system status, CPU usage, total RAM usage, uh, storage details, how much storage we've got available. And tell the system here what we want, how we want to show. We've got a couple of different settings menus up here. There's an update function. Up here at the top is a search bar. You can change your search parameters for Google, Bing, Startup Page, Brave Browser. Uh, you can even change the web UI port. Let's change the wallpaper. I like this purple one a little bit better. Auto mount a USB drive. So if we connect an external storage to your server, you can copy the files over through the files app as well. Uh, we've also got up here a terminal and logs. You're going to log in here with the username for your Linux install. So it's going to give us full access to the terminal here, right within a browser. So if we needed to go through and update any packages or install any packages, we could do that with our core system right through here. I guess it helps if you spell it correctly. But you can see we've got full access to the terminal right within our browser now. Super convenient and log files as well. First thing that you'll want to do likely with this new machine is to set it up to share files over your network, whether they be backing up your home photos, backing up streaming your YouTube footage, uh, storing any sort of other data on your network for access through other computers, is to open up the Files app. And then I'm going to go up just one, uh, one folder. And what I'm going to do overall is share my entire data directory and everything within it, right? 
that's going to give us access to um, the app data folder when we create our Docker containers. We're going to be able to FTP in or browse uh, the app data folder as well. Helpful if you need to copy any data over to and from uh, those Docker containers as well. Uh, also gives us just quick, easy access to any one of these folders individually. So what we'll do is we'll pop up. I'm just going to select right here uh, my data directory and I'm going to click share. It's going to tell us right out of the gate. Here's how we can access it within Windows, uh, within Mac and the Finder. I'm going to take this address, I'm going to copy it, click on got it, and then what I'll do is I'm going to come back, I'll launch my Finder, I'm going to go up here to go, connect to server, I drop in this new address here. We're going to add it in. And let's connect to it. And then we're going to say we are just a guest. There's not a lot of security set up on this local, local server here. All right, now we can see that we've got our root directory here. Everything in this data folder is exactly as it looks in the files app when we open up this data directory. So we've got those same exact folders, and we can copy things to and from our local machine directly, right? So if we go into downloads here, and let's see, let's take this JPEG and drop it in. We've copied it over. If we go into downloads, now we can see here's my eBay listing for this machine that I purchased. Really great, easy way to share files. Okay, here in Windows, what we can do to access our new network share is we can open up new Windows Explorer window. And what we can do is we can go up to the address bar. We can just type in the address of our server, so 192.168.0.144, and enter. And look, here's our data folder and several folders inside. If we go to our downloads folder, you can see that we've got this eBay JPEG or ping that we dropped in a little bit earlier. And we've also got our little picture of Sophie in here. So a quick and easy way to also add this to your Windows PC. All right, so from here, what we can do is we can add this data folder as a network drive in our Windows PC as well for some quick, easy access to it. We go to this PC. We can go to Map Network Drive. We're going to add in our server here. Hit finish. And now we can see if we go to this PC, see that our Z drive here is loaded. And if we double click on it, we've got all of our folders in here as well. So here's our download folder again. What else is this file server good for? Well, Casa OS makes it super duper easy uh, to add containers. This has got to be one of the easiest ways I've ever found to install Docker containers. It comes with quite a few right out of the gate here. So you can see that we've got a whole slew of things from AdGuard Home, uh, Anaconda, if you're into any kind of uh, programming data analytics things, uh, chat GPT front ends, all sorts of pieces here. Plex server uh, for streaming video, uh, Pi-hole, photo prism, all sorts of things. But out of these nearly 100 apps, we can get more. If you click on this apps here and we do more, it's going to pull us up to the awesome store list. All right. And what we can do is we can get up to nearly 500 different apps. So all we're going to do is we're going to copy each one of these repositories and we're going to add it to our Casa OS. So we click on more apps, drop in the link, and then we add it. Now we've got 281. And then we're going to take this cool store. We're going to add the cool store as well. We'll come back to the edge store. Oh 
some automation. Big Bear Casa OS. And that's the last one I'm going to add because I don't do anything with penetration testing. So the rest of those apps aren't going to apply to me. Now you can see we've got almost 500 apps to choose from. What you'll notice here is now we've got Archive Box. We've got a multitude of different versions of AdGuard here. You'll see some duplicates that pop up. Uh, tons and tons now. We've got Crafty Controller, super easy way to create a, a Minecraft server, dedicated Minecraft server, all sorts of other additions. Nextcloud in here, only Office server, um, Pi-hole and Unbound together, all sorts of options. Now that we've got all those apps installed, uh, we could drop in AdGuard Home um, or Pi-hole, something to use as a DNS ad blocker on the network. One thing that you're going to want to be aware of, though, is that uh, if you're installing on Ubuntu, not sure about any other distros, uh, but Ubuntu has some has a DNS server that already runs on port 53. So what we need to do is turn it off. So back to our terminal here. The fix for this is found at Stack Exchange here. Um, so I'll link this this website into the video directory and use our terminal to edit some of these configuration files. So in this file, we're just gonna follow some of the steps here list, listed or outlined. Gonna go down here and we're gonna uncomment DNS and we're gonna add in our own DNS server there. DNS stub listener to be uncommented out and we're going to change it to no. I'm going to save this file and we are set there. Um, we need to run one last thing. We need to create the symbolic link. We're going to copy that command pop back over, drop it in, run it. For good measure, we're going to go ahead and reboot the machine. All right, now with our machine back up, let's go ahead and make sure that port 53 is open so that we can take care of DNS on it. And we've got no output, so we're golden. Good deal. We've got one more workaround here that we're going to do. And that's uh, to adjust a couple more settings here on the machine so that we can save files from our iPhone or from our iPad to this Casa OS machine. So if you use the Files app, connect to your server, you're going to get this weird error. And I'll show a screenshot of it here that says that the file names are too long. So some sort of wonky uh, wonky thing, but um, we can adjust one file and it'll fix it. Enter the command sudo nano We're just going to update the sandbox configuration here. Oh my god, super scary. Do not modify. This one line, we're just going to uncomment. We'll line it up with the rest of them. Control X, we're going to save this, and then we'll reboot again. I suppose I should have done that when I made the other changes. All right, we are up and back. Jump back into our machine. All right, we are back up again. All right, so the sky is the limit with your new Casa OS machine. In subsequent videos, we'll get into some of our other Docker containers here.
Um, I've got a machine running on a Zima blade right now here at home. And um, what I like to use it for is a couple of things. I run uh, AdGuard Home and use it to block DNS, uh, DNS advertisements, right? So kind of stops ads from the core. Uh, I also use it as a local mumble server. So my son and I love to play some multiplayer games, uh, specifically Beam is one of our favorites, Minecraft as well. Uh, I run a home assistant on here. I've got a dedicated Half-Life 2 deathmatch server, uh, as well as a crafty server for some Minecraft uh, Minecraft servers here locally for my son and I. That's going to wrap up today's This Old Dell video. Take care, and thanks for watching.